Perry, and um, our next speaker is Dr. Jean Wontan, who's going to be presenting a paper titled Association Heritage in Early Chinatowns in North America. And um, about Chinatown and having been you know doing research in, in Chinatown for over 10 years actually I just talked to a Harry uh, I haven't finished yet and I don't know how to finish because every time when you go to Chinatown you see new things you know I spent a month you know the, the spent the last month in, in San Francisco Cisco Chinatown and when I walk in the association buildings and even though, for example, my home association, my home family association, I have been there many, 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 many times. But only in this time, I figured out that the association was founded in 1848. It is very, very early, you know. And I did not know why. Because, you know, it always said that the first, the first association building, uh, the, uh, the first association, uh, Chinese association was the uh, you know, the um, say Yap association, right? But but actually, this family association, our Hong family association, was founded the same year as the say Yap uh, uh, district association. So always new things. And but today I'm going to talk about the heritage perspective um, about the uh, Chinatown. So these people, you know, as Henry mentioned a lot, many, most of them, I would say, are from um, Canton, from Guangdong, and we think this group of people were more people from Seiyang area. So for early Chinatowns, even though now we say we have over 100 associations in Chinatowns, but uh, what I'm going to say is the uh, traditional associations in early Chinatowns. And when we go to Chinatown, we see architecture, we see people, we, we see the culture that, you know, associated with them. But all this actually go to one um, very specific group, it's called China, uh, Cantonese. So why, you know, Harry you know, and me will focus on, or we would say, this is Cantonese, because China is so big, you know, we have so you know, People from different areas and people from different areas would, would have their own culture, their own language. So, so these associ associations are actually Cantonese people. Um, so for associations we have, we call um, Hui Wan. That's the association built with people from the same district. And then we have Gong So. Gong So is for the family association. And then we have Tong. Tong is business linkage. So actually, it's not just this. You know, when I go into, a, for example, a family association, for example, the wall, you know, your wall, but actually, not one wall association. There are maybe 10 or 8 or 15 smaller wall associations under this big one. So a lot of secrets actually, you know, inside these associations. So, um, it, no time, I don't, I don't want to go into the details. And I just want to um, talk about the... Like, <coughs> These three groups of associations, bigger groups, and this is Hui Wan. And usually they are like this four. And in San Francisco Chinatown, 
for summer ranking in Vancouver, Chinatown, they have they have similar but not necessarily the same. So um, these are based on the districts that they the, the district origins in China. So uh, they are from uh, six different actually uh, five different places. This one is Lingyue, and these two are we call Seiya, and then we have Gongzhou also Seiya. So actually, uh, one, two, three. These three are Seiya, and this is Gongzhou, <coughs> and this is uh, Samya is Nanhai Pan Yu Shun Le, and then that's Hakka. So these are bigger uh, district associations. And how they count this, how they make these associations, actually based on this. We call Chut Gong Piu, you know, Chu Gang Piu. It's like, uh, we call exit certificates or exit fees that they have to pay before going to China. So, for example, like your association have more income from the exit uh, certificates, then you have more quotas, so you have more power in Chinatown. So according to the exit uh, certificates, Toysan, this is Lingyue, they have more, because they have more people going up. So they have 27. And you see, this is uh, one county from Toys, that is 27, and all the other plus is 28. So, so you, you can imagine the power in Chinatown is Toys. And so, this is Toys, and all together, this is, this is Seiya. So, 27 plus 19, that's Seiya. And this is, uh, this is Zhongsa. This is Samya and Yahaka. So you, you can see all this, the politics come in Chinatown actually consists of like this. And so that's the district. And the second one is the uh, family association. So family association also, you know, consists of very big families. So the Wong, the Li, the Yi, the Chen, all these are big because they have more people. And but for smaller uh, surnames, they had to work together, you know, to get more power. You know. Uh, for example, the first one children, it's Tam Tam Hoi Zhe. You know, all these the, the four characters have the same and uh, in Chinese they have the same, you know, we, we they call like brothers. So, so these four salims work together. All these are, you know, different salims work together to have more power, more mutual aid. So all together, they can make more money. They can collect more money to to build, you know, uh, properties for their uh, upcoming. Uh, uh, clansmen or the uh, uh, descendants, even now, their de descendants would have their shares income from these associations. Uh, so usually, like these are the buildings in Chinatown that you can see. They have top floor is their worshiping. It's the, the the family altar that you can worship the family, and then the second lo second floor or the is their rooms for their people coming from the village. So if you are from the village, you don't have a job, you have no money, you can just stay there, you then you have the place to stay, you have food to eat, and your people will introduce you, you know, job. And this floor for rent, so that they can have income to support the activities on upper floors. Oh, this is another example of the Wong family. And so this is Tong. Uh, a lot of reports on Tong Wars 
And so people from outside would think, wow, this Chinese were dirty, you know, the gambling, the uh, prostitutes, and all those things, you know, arranged or managed by Tong. You know, when we talk about this, and, and also I interview a lot of people from Tong, and they said, oh, yes, you can see the dirty things, you know, from outside. Because you are from outside, you do, you're not from inside, you don't know how we make, the, make it benefit. Because, for example, they actually charge the gamblers, and then the income is for the use for the public. You know, the use for the, the charity. You know, that's how they, you know, manage, and that's how they survive in Chinatown. Uh, okay. Um, do I have... Yeah, you have five more minutes. Five more minutes, okay. So, so because of the, you know, the, the, the conflicts between different yeah, business and uh, 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 people. So they have the uh, Chinese General Peace Association to settle the, you know, to balance the conflicts. And also, uh, they have general, uh, the charitable associations. Each family association or each district association they have a small, a small association, especially take care of the, uh, the uh, bones and also like the deaths, the, the funerals. You know that's what they do, and then they have business association, this Chinese Chamber of Commerce, and so this is this the background of the associations. Let's look at. The buildings. So these are the buildings that they built, you know, in for tourists. You know, at the very beginning, built for the tourists. This is, but later on, actually they they thought this is the uh, presence of their hometown or their native place. So, for 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 example, the one over there, Ningyang um, Association. At the very beginning, when they built it, they said, oh, no, we're now Chinese Americans. We don't need anything Chinese. We don't want to have a Chinese roof because the others, you know, have Chinese roof. But, but later on, in 1950, they, they put up the Chinese roof, you know, because, you know, everybody have that, you know, you, you should have. So this is their hometown architecture, you know. They learned this and, and they built this in their hometown. So uh, it is not just like, for them it's a uh, social data to show people, you know, that, you know, I'm doing well overseas. So, and also it's kind of the symbol of the uh, overseas status, you know, I'm overseas Chinese, you know, I have money, I have knowledge, I have, you know, the international, you know, global views. So this is the, the Ning Yang, you know, this is the middle, the, the middle school that they built in China. You know, the same thing. They said, we don't want Chinese, you know. Okay. Uh, I think I'm running out of time. Because I, my focus of the Chinese architecture in Chinatown. But no time to go through. You know, some of these are Chinese motifs. Um, but one thing I want to mention is, you know, even though in Chinatown, I mean, before 1955, you know, uh, there are many motifs, you know, uh, in Chinatown, but you don't see very much. Uh, these are the, this is longevity and, you know, and also money, but you don't see, you know, uh, the uh, double happiness many, uh, very much because they don't have m many marriage here. They don't have many children. So this is, the thing, and also association heritage. This is my conclusion. You know, when we talk about all this association culture, a lot to say, but the uh, people, they are get, getting old, and we don't have enough new, new generations coming. And even though if they come, they are not the same as before. I mean, the thinking, it's not the same as before. So, uh, 
So these are the, the people that I interviewed. They are, they are all in the 80s, 90s, or those people local born, you know, they have the, the heart to, to serve the community, but they don't really understand the culture. Or their mm, understanding of culture is different from the other, you know, generations. And this is something happening in the Kuma Chinatown. You can see, you know, association properties were turned down and built new apartments. And this has happened in this Chinatown, um, Grand Avenue. It's a tourist uh, street. I talked to many uh, Chinatown people here. This, they don't, they don't see this street is their street. It's because this is a tourist street. You know, uh, they would say, Stockton Street is our street. <laughs> you know, they would, and when I talk to them, they say, oh, we close very early. We close at 6 o'clock. I said, no, I, I, I go to the restaurants in Grand Avenue. They open. Oh, they said they are not ours. So, this is my last slide. So, this is my, you know, my concern. How to sustain the association culture, or what to sustain, what should be kept, or what should not be kept. You know, this is about lifestyle and way of thinking. So this is something that, you know, I interview lots of people in Chinatown, and I ask them about the future of Chinatown. What do you think about that? And some will say, no future. Why? Because no spirit of Chinatown. No spirit of Chinatown. That's their answer. So what are the values of Chinatown? And Chinatown used to be the root of the Chinese, uh, you know, in the country. It used to be the home for many Chinese. It used to be the place that they can ask for help when they are, you know, abroad. But is still Chinatown the same purpose for them to come? No more. So this is something that we, you know, in my mind, you know, when I do research. And also, when I interview, like, newer people, newer immigrants, what do you think about the future of Chinatown? They will say, oh, we just hang out here, we don't really think about the future. So this is another group of people. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you so much.